First and foremost, we're going to talk about the default group policy objects. Um, who here happened to have done an upgrade from Windows NT to Active Directory? Who did that? Okay, some of you. Great. And when you did that, you actually migrated forward a bunch of um, settings contained in user mangler for domains. User accounts, policies, and password policies, and a couple other things. Those things automatically got generated into your default domain policy. Okay? So the default domain policy handles three things, three very important things. Account policy, Kerberos policy, and password policy. Let me say that again. If you want different password policies in Windows 2003 domains, you need to have, get this, multiple domains to handle it. Because if you want five character passwords and you want seven character passwords, well, you better meet in the middle somewhere because you just can't do it in Server 2003. In Server 2008, it's a different story. Server 2008, there's a new thing called FGPP, or Fine Grain Password Policy. And it's a huge pain in the tush, and we're not going to cover it because it's not group policy related, believe it or not. You do not set fine grained password policies using group policy. It's a whole other thing that is more complicated. But long story short, in Server 2003, if you want multiple uh, password policies, it's two different domains, which is a real pain in the butt. So anyway, long story short, you know, every once in a while I get a phone call that goes like this. I get, hey, Moskowitz, I don't know what's going on. All the computers in my domain are being reset. Uh, all the user password policies are being reset. Everybody's asking to reset their password. What's going on? Well, what's happening is that somebody is somebody created a group policy object higher in the link order than the default. What's going to win? Three, two, or one? One. So somebody put an incorrect password policy and linked it higher in the linking order. And uh oh all of a sudden things start resetting in a very not cool way. So don't be that guy. So like I said, the default domain policy does great, uh, is what you want to modify for account policy, password policy, and Kerberos policy. Um, you want to try to avoid modifying the defaults for just about anything else. If you want to deploy software, if you want to uh, you know, set touchy-feely settings, great, go do that at the domain level. Affect everybody, but try to stay away from the default domain policy when you're doing that, okay? How about, does setting password policy at another level actually do anything? And the answer is, yes. Wait a minute, I just heard you say that if you set a password policy at any other level, it doesn't do anything. So what does setting a password policy at an OU level actually do? Well, if you have a local account for somebody who maybe is using a local laptop, and the laptop is joined to the domain, but their account is local to the workstation, the password policy you're setting at the OU affects their local account. So if you want to make that guy on the local account reset their password every 20 days and have super strong passwords, that's great. It doesn't affect his domain account. It only affects his local account. Does that make super clear sense? Any questions on that? Okay. The default domain controllers policy. So for the default, that, for the default domain controllers policy, we want to make all of our domain controllers act very, very similar. The goal is we want to make sure that if somebody logs onto one domain controller, they get the same experience as they log onto another domain controller. Um, there are a lot of um, instances where you also want the same experience. You want to walk up to one domain controller, hit control, delete, and log on, and log on to another one, and log on locally there too. So there's the default domain controllers policy that says all domain controllers are going to try to act as darn alike as possible. That's the goal here. Okay? And there are some extra special settings that can only be set in the default domain controllers policy that will um, affect other users, uh, other settings. There's a really wacky one, like don't display last logged on user, that's interesting, and um, the user rights assignments are there, and uh, domain controller event log settings. So basically, there's a whole category of features that are only set there. I do go over them in excruciating detail in the book if you want to look those up at some point. But the point of the story is that you want all of your domain controllers to act exactly alike. That's the key takeaway. You want all the event logs to share the same you know, event space, that kind of thing.